Hello, my name is Zach. I'm the Sotologist, and today I am going to be going through Taylor Swift's 1989 Pop Walks. This was a time when she was notedly out and about every single day of her life, and we're very much in the era of Taylor Swift being out and being photographed in New York City every single day again, and I love to see it. So I wanted to go through the hallowed, hallowed history of TaylorPictures.net, your number one source for every Taylor Swift visual that you ever need to find. This is an invaluable archive of everything Taylor related, and the 2015 year is like stocked full of files and we're going to go through some of them and pick out our favorite Taylor Swift looks from 2014 till about 2015. I'm not going to do Bleachella in this video because to me Bleachella is kind of its own era. It's like the bridge between 1989 and Reputation. So we're really just going to be looking at her fashion evolution from when she moved to New York to when she went on the 1989 world tour and maybe a few months in between that. And I'm going to pick my favorites. I'm going to pick the ones that I hate, which is a lot. She was basically a walking garment rack at this point, I suppose. Her whole purpose in life other than to be a musician was to walk around with a bag holding her arm out like this and there will be a boyfriend or two appearing here i think it's just going to be calvin harris demon demon man but i will when there are more travis kelsey candidates i will trust and believe get around to ranking and reviewing all of her pop walks with her boyfriends because i know that's content that you want to see Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Over 50% of you that watch my videos are not subscribed, which is so hurtful because I put a lot of effort into these videos and it helps me so much when you subscribe. So please do check out the Patreon if you want to, patreon.com slash ritologist, my podcast, blah, blah, blah. I stream live on Twitch on Tuesdays and Fridays, so that's linked down below. If you miss those streams, you can get them on demand on the Patreon. Enough jabbering. Let's just get right into it. So Taylor Pictures is the GOAT photo gallery website for Taylor. If you want to find something obscure and you can't find it anywhere else, this is the place you need to go. Look at the candidates folder alone. There are 48 thousand files in here. That's more than concerts and performances, okay? And when we look at the years and the amount of albums and files, do any particular years stick out to you as being overwhelming? 2014, 396 albums, 18,000 photos. 2015, 146 albums, 7,000 photos. Then look at the drop that we have when she's dating the boring man, heirloom turkey, who gave us nothing. 2017, five albums. 2018, 19, 18 in 2019, one in 2020. Well, that was like kind of beyond, you know, anybody's circumstance. But in 2023, we see for the first time more than 50 albums and more than a thousand photos since 2016. So when I say we're in the Taylor songs, when I say we're in the 1989 era, the remix, we really are. So let's go to 2014 and see what we have here. So I'm going to count the beginning of the 1989 era as basically from when she moved to New York officially and Shake It Off was like about to come out. So this era of time, this January of 2014, beautiful, beautiful, bellissimo candidates, but we kind of need to go to after the haircut in order to get, you know, the full 1989 energy that we need. She got the haircut in February, so I'm thinking it's probably around March that we get our first candidates of Taylor being a girl boss living in the big city. This is one of her out and about with the newly chopped hair, hanging out with the one and only Lord. Do you remember these photos? I remember these photos. If you were a Tumblr user, you have certainly seen these images. This was like hot off the heels of when Lord was like slandering Taylor Swift's name every day, and then all of a sudden, Taylor played style for her and they became best friends forever and ever. She's wearing some burgundy skinny jeans and a beautiful coat. Taylor knows how to rock a coat. I will give that to her. Here we have an excellent look. Very simple, very classic. Just a black leather bag and a beanie. She doesn't wear beanies so much anymore, but like whenever I see her in a beanie, I'm instantly recalled to the Speak Now era, which is just something that I love to see. And she's wearing autumnal hues in April. Could we not get a pastel at this time? She was still kind of playing it safe at this point. Her real fashion adventurous moments would come out in the summer when there was, you know, sun beating down on the back of her neck and a midriff to expose. Also in March of that year, we have this main character moment where she's trying to stop that ugly ass bowler hat from flying off her head. Girl, just let it go. It wants to be free. I love the boots. I do. I love a cunty boot. I actually defined what a cunty boot was on my last Twitch stream, which is on demand on my Twitch, so you can go and see what it is. But a cunty boot is basically a boot that is, has a heel, has a significant heel probably has a clop factor when you hear it and is chunky but is not a platform so like a Doc Martin is not a cunty boot this is a cunty boot wow I mean bellissimo excellence this is a photo that is painted on the back of my eyelids the fuck ass ball had started to grow out a little bit she was straightening her hair again she was wearing a plaid scarf she was wearing a camel coat I love the length of the coat and the plaid shirt that matches the scarf peeking out underneath so cute those burgundy pants again this is when she was an outfit repeater wired headphones and what was she doing we know she was listening to a cut of 1989 this is before anything had even been announced this is when we were technically still in the red era but this there's also a really funny video of her trying to just like walk normally down the street in this exact outfit with the paparazzi yelling at her and she just looks 
look at deer in the headlights i will note the fingerless gloves the fingerless woolen gloves i'm not going to say anything about them i'm just noting them serving absolutely serving this is a no makeup makeup look sleigh we rarely ever get to see taylor swift in a pair of glasses this was before her lasik surgery so here she is wearing her glasses i think she looks good in glasses and she should wear them more i also am obsessed with the pop of that orange bag against the like slouchy coziness of that like jersey shirt and the woolen coat i'm really the hair also looks great i mean why am i loving this so much now this was a choice i detest this color of yellow on her she wears it from time to time it veers almost into that very nice orange that we see in one of the 1989 bodysuits but it's not quite there it's a little too golden hued and i despise it i think it looks horrible i think that color looks horrible on anyone with a really fair complexion it just makes you look a bit sick and it doesn't help that she's wearing a red lip a purple checked shirt dress black tights and this disgusting disgusting orange cardigan i like the hair though i like the kind of half up half down i didn't know you could do that with such a short oh my god and the shoes make it so much worse <laughs> why don't i remember this at all i mean this was like truly the hybrid of the 1989 and the red era she was like i need to wear a brogue but i also need to make it barbie so like someone so she said to joseph castle her stylist babe i need you to go out and find me a pair of brogues and a pair of stiletto heels and i need you to cut off the stiletto heel shave down the sole of the brogue and stick the stiletto on because no one in their right mind would design this shoe to be worn by a normal person. This is a classic too. It's hard to review these in hindsight because they're just so burned into my brain. When we were on tumblr.com, these photos were everything to us. These minute by minute updates of what she was doing. She was shopping at Theory today and looking flawless while doing it. I love the very, very subtle cinching at the waist with that belt. I don't know if it's part of the dress or if it's an extra thing. The shoes... One thing about Taylor's style is that she will always fuck something up. Like it's the, either the hair is wrong, the makeup is weird, there's an accessory out of place, the shoe is bad. It's not possible really for her to like completely hit it out of the park. And I find that very endearing and relatable. So in this scenario, I would say that that booty, I don't even know what you would call that, is not giving what she wants it to get. What I find to be so fascinating about this specific stretch of time, like right after she moved to New York, but before she really started properly doing the visuals and setting the stylistic tone for 1989, is seeing how one era falls away and another emerges. Like this is very red era, but there is also a very 1989 Taylor element about it with the glasses. I always think a wayfarer is just bellissimo, the classic beautiful shape that looks wonderful on her face. I really disliked the short cut when it was fully straightened. I always liked it with a little curl, a little body. This is giving Caroline Kennedy, JFK Jr., 90s, high end port, model off duty realness. I'm obsessed with this. And here also I can see like glimmers of the red era, but also the 1989 era peeping out. Would she have let her bra straps show in the red era? No, she was still doing the good girl thing. She's letting a little bit more leg on display. She's not wearing tights. She are, is also not wearing high-waisted shorts. These are low-rise jean shorts and the bra straps peeking out. I mean, she was sexing it up in her own very Taylor Swift way. You know what actually I think the real turning point in her sartorial identity was between Red and 1989? I think it was the Met Gala, which is coming up pretty soon after this. This is April 2014 and the Met Gala is in May, I believe. I feel like the Met Gala really was like a bearing of an old like sweetheart kind of Taylor with that big ridiculous bow. It was a very America's sweetheart gown and she was definitely going for something a little bit more cool and modern. But I think here we can again see that like transition period too. The dress is a little, it's a little revealing. It's got a lacy back. She's arriving at the SNL after party here, but she also has a little crystal hair bow so there's something a little darling about it too one thing about taylor is that she loves a bowler's hat she hasn't worn one in a while but red in 1989 they had her in a grip they had her in a grip statement hat she said yes please ugly booty shoe yes please okay this series of photographs truly takes my breath away these are some of the most stunning candidates ever i love this outfit it's like a deconstructed button up checked top that has like a a piece that tucks into a long skirt with this gorgeous red purse and the red lip i mean come on there's something very regal. There's something very almost presidential about this. I remember when I saw this, I immediately thought of those very famous uh, pictures of Jackie Kennedy on the streets of New York City. And that was kind of the birth of the modern celebrity photography candid paparazzi movement. She was heavily pictured when she moved to New York after her husband's assassination. And if you look those pictures up, maybe I'll put a few on screen here. They definitely are giving kind of a similar energy to this. Now, who remembers this one? There's one thing she loved in the 1989 era. It was a romper or a two-piece set with her mid-drift out. So we have a romper going on here. I don't love the hair. The hair is giving like 80s in a dated way, not in a cool way. And 
the color of the purse with the red lip orange and red together all the time i don't know how to feel about it but this is a pretty iconic look you'll remember this from her sitting on the stoop with a bubble gun machine that was an instagram that she posted in this outfit talk about ending the red era with a bang i like how the bags and the shoes match those shoes look very uncomfortable and they're a little chunky for my liking but the dress fits beautifully i mean i love it when taylor wears simple clean cut things with straight lines and beautiful proportions tailored perfectly to fit her this is one of those instances and you know she knows she's serving look at that look in her eye she's like red heard of it i invented the color who remembers this moment this is when she was going to model fit gym yes i remember the name don't ask me why i was terminally online when these photos were coming out she was at model fit gym every day and everybody kind of caught on so people would wait to catch a glimpse of her outside of the gym this was i think before people really started camping outside of her apartment but it was in that period of time and she did a really cute photo moment i believe her security guard like pulled the girl over and said she could take a picture with taylor and i just think that this is an adorable photo and i love the look i like her in all black she doesn't do it often enough all black is a good look for taylor i like this i don't know why my impulse is to say that i don't like it i think it's because i'm just not a fan of when she wears yellow but there's something about the hue of the yellow and the pops of green that are involved too this is very red era she was into the granny dresses in the red era massively so i guess she was not 100 percent out of the woods on that front but here she is wearing it with her father scott swift and to be honest the cut of scott swift's pants is really giving 90s like those that outfit that he's wearing on a young guy would be very cool that would be like a tiktok gen z outfit today this is a very important moment in Taylor Swift history this was the debut of the two-piece crop top mid-drift set and she had this in different colors I think there was a green there may also have been a black but she thought that she was serving in this outfit look at her look at look at the look in her eyes she went to the gym she knows she's the fucking it girl this was when she was growing up the image a little bit showing a little bit more skin but without being too revealing it's always interesting to see in hindsight how Taylor evolves her sartorial identity and something that I've noticed from the 1989 era is that yes she was showing more skin but she was quite modest in terms of what skin she was showing she would show shoulder she would show arm not a lot of cleavage at this period of time she would show a slice of the midriff never the belly button and never anything really above the butt cheeks so I, there was a modesty element to it that i think is interesting her her growing up as a public figure was certainly very considered and calibrated um i don't like this I don't like this. This looks like a tea cozy that my granny has that I made her throw away because it was hurting my eyes and it was clashing with the otherwise very cool and austere aesthetic of her kitchen. I don't like this just feels like an assault on the eyes this is like eye terrorism to me like i can't i can't really look at this it's hurting my feelings it's making me feel a bit nauseous i'm gonna have to turn this one off i can't decide if this is great or horrible i can't really tell what's going on here i do love that pastel blue color on her very 1989 and I like the top. I think the top with like some low rise black jeans would look really cute, but the pairing of them plus the shoe, it just looks like she has four different outfits going on. Like what is the strap situation going on on that heel? It's just the proportions of it somehow are off. Like the sleeve is a weird length. It has that white hem. There's also a gap between the skirt and the top, but it's not like a pronounced gap. It looks like an accident, not an intentional decision. So I thought it, and from afar, it kind of looks like it's tucked in too so i think this is not a slay um hello ma'am first of all taylor swift should get a nobel peace prize for being the first person ever to like stay in new york city throughout the entire summer it is disgusting to be in new york when it's that hot it's very humid it doesn't matter how rich you are even one second of walking on the street puts you an internal state of damnation and misery but here she is serving cunt on the sidewalks of new york when everyone else was melting into a puddle she was like let me just throw on a little bra top and this cute skirt and get a spray tan and just serve and that's exactly what she's doing i'm obsessed with this outfit this is such a memorable look to me from this period of time here we have taylor swift and the crook who was caught and i have to say like carly is supposed to be the model that's off duty but she's really not serving i guess she wasn't really maybe expecting to be photographed like look at those slovenly shoes those are not that is not the vibe that top is like too that doesn't it's ill-fitting it doesn't really work and then we have taylor who is literally arching her back and smizing for the camera like that top is so well fitted those shorts are kind of sexy but not too risque and that nude heel something that she wore a lot this summer but i'm into it i'm really into this look sometimes she was doing so much in one day that there would just be like multiple candidates and albums of her in the same picture this is like six albums of her in this one pink two-piece and you know what it kind of deserves it kind of deserves i mean you can't really argue with the material of this one actually now that i'm looking at it up close not a flattering color if we had a spray tan it would look a little bit better i'm always saying that i'm always saying where's the spray tan and she's always saying i'm casper the friendly ghost the woman behind her is so me she's literally like that's an angel. 
that's a vision and she's so right. This period of time was really a warm up for two things. I think the Victoria's Secret fashion show to which the job description was essentially strut to save your life and also for the 1989 world tour which also had the job description of strut to save your life and she strutted. She strutted. Look at this casual outfit. Why is there something so cool about this? It's giving very 2011, 2012 Tumblr. Like I listened to the Lumineers in the 1975 RIP. We can't talk about that. But the bowler hat is back and you know what? I don't hate it here. I don't hate it here. I would love to see a pair of sunglasses. Give me the wayfarers. I'm ready for it. Even a pair of aviators would look kind of cool with this, don't you think? An over-the-shoulder smolder. She was also refining her poses for paparazzi. And it's so weird to watch videos of her walking in and out of places because when the door opens, you can see her click into like model mode and realistically with a camera like the camera snaps so quickly all you need is like an imperceptible tilt of the head and a smile and that's it and then you just keep going but if you watch the videos you can like see her making the decision to either give them something or not give them something and it's interesting to watch i don't like this this is giving i went to the discount mall and put a blindfold on and the three stores that were there were j crew old navy and forever 21 and this is what i came out wearing what the fuck is with the brogues why brogues with everything now serve and slay of the century. Remember that pink two-piece we looked at earlier? This is, I think, by the same designer, but this is the gray two-piece, and who she's with is the guy who wrote a cover article on her for the Rolling Stone magazine, and this is an extremely iconic day. Lots of lore came from this. We got a lot of information about 1989, and this was before Shake It Off had even come out yet. So she was walking around with this big secret. Only her, this journalist, her security team knew what was happening. And she encountered many people of the public and apparently a crowd and a mob formed. And it was a little scary. And I think this was the first and last time I've seen her in the Central Park vicinity since the 1989 era. She also saw two fans on a boat and gave them $90 to go to Chipotle. Taylor Swift thinks Chipotle costs $90. That should show you how in touch she is with the on the ground realities of the world. So for everyone asking her to comment on politics... She thinks Chipotle costs $90. What do you think she's going to be able to do about inflation? I love the accessories in this. I love the yellow bag. I love the pop of pink with the shoe. I think this is very iconic. I would have loved to have seen a dialed up lip. I think that could have been fun, like a frosty pink lip. That would have been good. This is an iconic photo set. I mean, for many reasons. First of all, it was memed to death. There are a couple shots of her looking very sad sitting on a park bench. And those photos were kind of taken out of context and thrown around to be like, oh, she's sad about Harry, blah, blah, blah. But really, she was eating a frozen yogurt. <laughs> like normally, she doesn't look sad. She's just eating some yogurt and listening to a rough cut of 1989. So why should we just presume that she was upset? Because if you look at every other snap from this series, she doesn't look that sad. She's just sitting there listening and thinking and pondering. I do think it's weird that she was brave enough at this time to just go to a park by herself. I mean, that's rogue, obviously with security, but just with no comrades. This is such a funny picture. <laughs> what is that this looks like one of those accidental outtakes of like a night out from your facebook album that you posted in 2010 um hello body audi audi i mean this is just a beautiful fit a beautiful fit this was an era of time where taylor you know realized that she had model-esque good looks and as a consequence she felt emboldened to wear some really weird clothes that wouldn't look good on someone who didn't have that specific kind of body type so she got away with wearing a lot of weird things i guess this is the kind of garment that would not look good on everyone but it looks great here you certainly have to be tall and have long limbs to work with something like that and she's always got the legs working in her favor and she just looks like a fucking rock star she's a rock star doll okay this photo set is funny because it has a bunch of close-ups of her outfits let's look at these shoes okay up close they're gonna scare you because they are scary they are not good again with the fucking brogue heels she found another pair these are different ones to the ones before ah! <laughs> those are heinous you cannot sell me on these. They would not look good with literally anything. Now the bag, she was kind of into color blocking, I suppose. Like I like the bag and the contrast of it with the yellow. Do I like it all together as an outfit? There's like a stripe. There's also a pattern and then there's leather. It's like a lot going on. I do have to just highlight this close up shot of her because it is one of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen. And she's not even really posing. It's not a photo shoot. She hasn't had her makeup professionally done. I mean, look at, the, look at this material. Who is that? She's Gorgina. So this is when she got papped leaving the Empire State Building after filming the introduction to the live chat. I mean, this is just history. This is history in the making. That clip of her saying hello on top of the Empire State Building, that's from this day. I'm not sure if this was the same day that she did the first fledgling secret session in her home. It might have been. I'm on the fence about the shoe. There's, of course, a close-up picture for us to look at it. It's the netting. is not my favorite. I'm not opposed to the velvet. I like the color. I, I just don't. She loves a strap. 
a strappy shoe and she has long legs so i'm kind of like why dice them up like that now we're in september and shake it off is well and truly out i think this is when taylor really realized the potential reach of doing these pop walks she realized that she could just make headlines simply by strutting out her door and today how is she going to catch the headline news by bringing a cat there's olivia benson swinging for her life from taylor's arm i remember seeing this and thinking it was the greatest thing that i've ever seen and i still think so I still think so. No comment on the look, just a comment on the cat. This is Taylor at the airport in Hamburg when she went to go promote Shake It Off. And again, this is just a very like Kennedy-esque, red era, Hyannis Port vibe that I really like. This is something that I always want Taylor to return to. And sadly, is a style that she hasn't really revisited since then. And now she's veering into like Gen Z. I just went to liberal arts college and graduated with a degree in gender studies. That's really what she's giving now. And that's great it's a new look but I, I miss this old look she's such a classic natural beauty i wish she'd lean into it more this is her arriving at sydney airport and i'd like to know what possessed her to wear this shirt are those eyelashes on her titties eyelashes for nipples do you really want to associate hair with your nipples it doesn't seem like a good idea but yet at the time i was like she's serving also those are not knee-high boots are they they're socks do we need to wear socks like that i don't think so i do love her in a plaid coat and a pair of tights I don't know why it just does something for me i think she's wearing a headband here too she really was not ready to let go of the headbands in 2014. i think they officially died in like 2016 but like she was so so into the the, the theme of headbanding for a long long time these shoes are pretty good I'm actually pretty happy with this outfit i mean other than the fact that she wore it to meet the crook who got caught who as we all know should be in jail okay serve i'm scared of her this is a reputation easter egg it's a snake print Okay, I'm sure someone will say that. And could you make the argument that those shoes are also karma orange, but in a different hue? Someone could. Not I. Certainly not I. No mental illness around here. But she's serving. This is a little scary. There's something a little bit too severe about the proportions of this look. I think it's the fact that the stilettos are like so pointy and the heel is so slim. Arriving in Tokyo airport, this is another example of how she would just wear stuff that doesn't look good. She's wearing brooches and a sweater with a horse on it. We really don't need to be helping the horse girl allegations. We don't. We don't need to be assisting with that. They make themselves. We are in November now, and I just wanted to point out this poncho. I love it. I love it paired with all the green and the red lip. The contrasting is just super nice. This is her out and about in LA, and it's giving very much I Knew You Were Trouble music video, like the shaggy hair, the dressed down vibe. Again, this is ruined by the shoe for me. Did we need to do like a near black red shoe boot velvet thing with this whatever happened to a pair of biker boots that would have been cute with some like hardware on it or even just a simple black stiletto that would have taken it to a little bit more of a couture area rather than a i'm going to hang out with my boyfriend who doesn't have a job vibe maddie healy's girlfriend vibe speaking of him here we have the shot heard around the world now this was iconic okay the tumblr girlies had a fucking field day when this happened and maddie healy of course returned the favor with the 1989 ringer tee someone needs to find his version and steal it because i can't find one for a reasonable price online and i need it so someone do some theory and get it for me this shirt i mean i love that she i think she cut off the arms herself and like made it into something else i like that it's tucked into the skirt i think that it's cool i'm into it unfortunately i don't like the implications but i do like the execution okay this is such a perplexing look to me because it's like giving Paddington Bear. It's also giving this is my first day of school. And it's also giving I'm running away from home with an apple on a stick and a napkin on my back. It's giving a lot of different things. I'm not sure that any of them are excellent. I love the boot. This is a cunty boot for your reference. This is a cunty boot. The bag, I like leather accessories always. They're classic. They're timeless. It's that yellow it's that yellow, but the contrast between that and the red beanie and the red lip, if she wasn't wearing the red beanie, I would really hate this so much, but the red beanie kind of saves it for me. So I would give this maybe like a seven out of 10. This again is like dressed in the dark vibe, like the beanie that is not the same kind of topish color as the bag with that this is like a wrong shade of blue for me. It's like bordering on neon. I prefer a little pastel. The pastel blue coat that she wore when she was leaving some sort of gala with Joe, that is a great example of a pastel blue coat that looks good on her. This to me, along with the black tights and the black kind of like pussy bow shoes, I'm, it's not my thing. This is a ridiculous image for so many reasons. First of all, she's with Lena Dunham, or shall I say Queen of Dunham. I'm the only person left on earth who appreciates Lena Dunham and her artistry. And these earmuffs are insane. This is the one and only time I think I've ever seen her in earmuffs. There might be one from the Fearless era, but I just don't understand. That coat also looks very complicated. It's like a poncho coat cape situation. 
Again, she was trying new things. <laughs> I like the pop of color that like magenta is super nice and the shoe is, is not a hit to me. It's too, it's too chunky. All right, that concludes 2014. Now let's get into 2015. I don't really count her leaving events as like candidates. I'm looking more for like her street style, things that she would wear in her free time. This is a great example of something that looks bad, shall we say. This is so much worse <laughs> than I remember to be this is really giving urban outfitters this is really giving i have a dream catcher mounted on my wall i just found out what palo santo is and now everything in my house smells like an ashtray i the shoe i hate i hate the awkward length of it i hate that it looks like a sock i hate that it's kind of like a velveteen leather the harness now Taylor Swift needs to be banned from any sort of writing apparel. Anything that could be even slightly misconstrued as horse girl attire should be taken away from her. And it certainly should not be thrown on top of what can only be described as a rag. What is that? I hate this. I hate this. Why are we giving writing instructor in the first months of 2015? You've basically just put out, shake it off and blank space. You're in your like villanelle, man eater, satirical era and yet we're doing the saddle club why is that why see she even made the cunty boots look bad that hat this is the worst hat of them all what what do you even call this kind of hat it's not a page boy cap and it's not a bowler hat it's like a disgusting combination hybrid of the two and that red is not helping matters girl I like this. I like this so much. It's simple, legs on display, beautiful gold kind of metallic shoe. I love that white coat and the blue dress underneath it. I believe this was a billboard event. Also, her makeup looks really good. Frosted pink lip as it should. These are the iconic candidates of her trying to walk backwards to avoid the paparazzi, which she did a very poor job of. And I just think this is funny. New York. <laughs> I'm sorry, where do you live? Where do you live? She's always been really good at giving us an extremely literal message and never leaving things up to interpretation. I mean, where are you? But there's something very serving about this. She's not carrying a bag because she doesn't need to. She probably has her security guard carrying it behind her. She's got her wired headphones in. This is before Bluetooth headphones were really a thing. And she's serving. What can I say? I love her Navy too. Navy and cream. That's a combo we don't see a lot from her now. But back in the day when she was giving Regal, that's the color combination that she would choose. This is cute. I don't actually ever remember seeing this before. I don't love those kinds of sunglasses just as a general rule, like that weird gradient brown lens is not my favorite thing. But the, the dress, the mini dress is very cute. This reminds me of the dress she wore to the BMI Awards in 2016, which was like a long gown halter version of this. But I think this length is a really good one for her proportions. Bellissimo. This Barbie has a career in business. This Barbie belongs in the boardroom. This Barbie can do your hair, but this Barbie also can can fix your tire. This Barbie is everything. I am obsessed. Not a hair out of place. Skin looking flawless. She was kind of, when she got the pops of color right, it really worked for her. When she like matched it to her complexion. I love yellow and red and blue together. Again, primary color blocking. It just looks great. The hair is excellent. Head banding, still there. I love the little Peter Pan collar. So, so good. I think we need to see the shoe to like really get an impression of whether this was a complete and total serve. Right, please don't be brogues. Please don't be brogues. She fell. <laughs> she fell. She always falls at the fucking last hurdle. Imagine just like a, you know, even a, a white, a cream ballet flat with that would have been so cute. And yet we have these tangerine peach things, kitten heels. I don't want it. Uh oh. Uh oh. The demon man. He is so ugly. He looks like a turnip and he has a gorgeous, gorgeous girl on his arm. Look at her. Spray tan is really spray tanning here and the hair is herring and we're doing all black and i love it this is a very divisive look and again objectively this looks ugly it is a not even really a crop top it has a different length in the front and the back with dungarees and maybe jeans on underneath too she's definitely wearing something underneath the dungarees with a cunty boot and I, there's something about it that just screams serve, that just screams slay. And I'm powerless to do it. It's like, I know that this is objectively ugly, but it's working on me. And this is what it was like to live in the 1989 era. I know this is wrong, but still it feels right. A very simple serve. I think I would maybe put that nude heel on that she'd been wearing last year. I don't really like the blue, but her in all white, we had to clap. We had to clap. This is another occasion where she went out with Calvin Harris, and this is horrible. I don't know if it's the flash of the camera making it look 
so paisley, but that shade of blue with that taupe is really not it's like there is no contrast that's the problem and of course this is the days when she still tried to walk down the streets of new york city she could not do this now i think she does from time to time but it's like so few and far between like now she just walks from the car to the restaurant before it was like let's walk the block like let's get the car to drop us off around the block and pretend like we were able to walk here and that's what it's really giving here uh this is weird it's not bad, but it's weird. Like the shirt, the way that it's tied up. I just feel like she gets a little creative with how to style items that she has. And maybe sometimes you should leave it to the professionals. There's that yellow bag again. I like this. I like this. This is kind of giving Audrey Hepburn with the cat eye and the diamond stud earrings and the stripy top. I like that it kind of, it's three quarter length, I guess. It stops at the elbow. I think it fits her really nicely. And of course, a pair of black high-waisted shorts. She's familiar with them from the red era and they never, ever steer her wrong. I love this look. I know it's kind of weird, but there is something very old Taylor about it. And I think it's the, I mean, it's the headband combined with the like lacy half purple, very speak now era moment. There's something very whimsical and girlish about this. Of course she had to ruin it with a fuck ass shoe. It's bordering on brogue. And I think I've made it clear how I feel in this video about the brogue. So let's cut the brogue out and let's just admire the beauty. Up close, it's not great. <laughs> okay, the headband is the ear peeking out i mean we move this is a candidate of her shopping in beverly hills and i just love her in fine materials like i know that's a gorgeous cashmere sweater and it just it's cropped so perfectly i think that is that the same skirt she was wearing with the 1975 shirt maybe it's gorge again the gradient sunglasses could we not just go with the wayfarers plain black mattified i don't mind this this is cute. Again, I like the plaid mini skirt with a cute slouchy sweater. That's good. These are her traveling outfits. And you know what? We should make them more permanent rotations. And because she never flies commercial anymore or leaves from a commercial airport, we don't get to see her travel looks. And I think that that is a travesty. Okay. I don't know if taylorpictures.net is trying to correct the record, but, or I just missed it in my assessment of her outfit looks, but this has got to be the worst example of her experimental street style for the first offender is those fucking fuck ass booty shoes that i called out earlier hate the bag also is tacky it's giving cheap it's giving i like labels and taylor really doesn't ever give label horror she's very much always been actually like a quiet luxury kind of girly and i think that suits her better because she really shouldn't be flaunting her billion dollars like come on girly no the ripped cut off shorts fine <laughs> the rachel platten this is my fight song shirt she would just get a notion in her head in the 1989 era and see it through to the bitter end. The worst part of it all is the harness, the harness. And it was on backwards. It was on backwards. This is another look that I don't remember seeing in the Taylor Pictures collection. What did she do to her under eyes? Too much powder, girl too much powder. And so that's all I've got for you. I just wanted to give you a quick little fun video uh, in between all these like very, shall we say, effort heavy, heavy lifting, scripted video essays that are putting, taking a lot of time from me. I have to put a lot of thought into. I just wanted to get on here and gab. And that's what I did. So I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, you have to subscribe because that's the rule. Okay. Have a good day.